Welcome everyone back to Freelancer Discovery. I'm here to let you know that just because I'm not up uploading any freelancer videos lately does not mean I'm not actually playing it anymore. In fact, if you have seen my latest video about the event in Exeter, you should know there has been some big changes. We've taken over the coalition, the SCRA leadership, aka Serious Coalition Revolutionary Army which is the faction I'm leading. Now initially, some people planned or expected that I would be first in charge, but that wasn't my intention, as I'm fine with the rank field marshal, which puts me as a second in charge of this faction. You guys might remember my character Ivan Petrov, the legend himself, that somehow didn't die in Seoul, cough cough, definitely not an import from Starlands, has reclaimed his position in charge of the army and to not let shit happen like the previous administration did. Again, we in high command are making preparations for an actual system change. More like how the coalition as a body and government should function. No more dictatorships as the previous leadership tried, but as always, true to its ways to so socialism, with a slightly more democratic approach within the ranks. A complete coalition government revamp that will include all three existing coalition factions, the Army, SCEC and Volgograd Industrial. All will be able to decide the future of this faction together. No more, no more one-man army, no more that one bastard on top tells you what to do and you have to obey it, even though you know it goes clearly against what the faction stands for. Leon aka Voronsky, previous leader of Volgograd Industrial as Minister of Plenty, is now in charge as the Premier and we made it clear that it will stay as a meta character, not something you can actually play in game. Which makes sense as you let your high command also be involved in this process instead of you holding all the power. So we definitely have a vision of splitting power between each faction so that it, so that it makes it more engaging instead of you're gonna do whatever I say and if you won't shut up, you're out. I want people to be able to make changes with roleplay if they think the government is going into a wrong direction. Now the best example we just had was the non-aggression pact with Bretonia, which us wets have warned the previous leadership about its consequences in the past. Because obviously we had a non-aggression pact before and it didn't really work out well, outright making the faction really really uninteresting. You have two allies in Omega as your closest allies, which will depend on surviving and you just ditched them over a political bullcrap. While I understood their devotion because we had the Gallic War even though, with that I strongly advised against the nap, somehow none have thought about breaking this temporary truce after the war was over, and so these steps were necessary to take. It's not like there was a coup, the previous premier decided to be a traitor and defect to Britannia's privateers, which led to this conclusion. As the event video showed, we managed, we managed to push Bretonian arm, armed forces back and destroyed their battle group Sterling in Exeter, aka Omega-49. Still can't fucking believe they, they changed such a historic system's name. I know, I know, now some of the coalition members have witnessed an inactivity from my side. Hence why you also haven't seen any other videos being released and that's mainly because the mod got boring. Not the game, Freelancer will still be my all-time favorite. But holy shit, the mod is so bad. Especially after I saw all of that drama within the Rhineland government. As you, the community member, members have already witnessed, the whole wiping off the whole government over an encounter with their regular enemies, more like couldn't accept defeat, and instead of recruiting, recruiting new people or trying to change the government so that it appeals to even old wets that used to play RM, a lot back in the days, they decided to completely just remove everything and leave with a dramatic Rexit. See what I did there? Rhineland? Exit? Rexit? No? Okay, then I'll stop. Now I don't blame them 100%. Even though this may not be the bigger issue of all this, the tip of the iceberg still started with the player owned basis sieges. The loss of a POB in Discovery is so bad because it's so poorly implemented that it makes people really dependent on constantly worrying about it and logging into the game. Another, an, another negative aspect I never enjoyed in games, stop forcing me to log over stupid pixels that I'm gonna lose after a successful siege anyway. The, su the supplying of a POB, building of modules, maintaining it, going through all the process of roleplay and core upgrades is just too much work to be wasted wasted on while the mod lacks seriously on player interactions already. 
hell lately we have seen 20 to 30 players daily and after the exeter event it sparked to 70 80 again for a short per period of time before it dropped to 30 40 players again the pure beast should be something that you can expect losing without having spent too much work into it or just make them special roleplay requests only as they are easier implemented which would ultimately mean turning the base builder into an SRP ship only. If you're gonna talk about SRP, the whole shit has always been random as fuck. Which there, wish there were there were categories which shows you what level of SRP is easier to do and which ones are harder to get. Example, the Necrosis or Satsuma or the Leviathan should be hard ones, while pure bees and such may have an easier pass. But anyway, I have discussed this way too many times in the forum and on this which has dig really deep into it. While I agree, drama and discovery isn't new, it's just the scale and effect of it that is bigger. People are very emotional lately, whenever something doesn't go the way they want. I tried to do podcasts and those faction leader interviews for getting to know people better, to leave out their frustrations and their joyful moment in a friend friendly environment, mainly with my calming, somehow crazy sexual voice however off after a couple interviews i got ignored by the ones i put on the list as next possible guests now i agree i haven't really been the best dude in discovery in the past so i can understand why some are shying away from what i will actually put up as an you know as an end result video put on the video as a result but most of the times i tried to be fair and others, now we're coming slowly to the part why I myself am so in inactive, have lost interest in the game overall or are busy with other things. I wish the devs or just the staff team in general would spend a bit more time with their community members and taking their complaints seriously rather than having this annoying attitude, attitude of you guys are just a bunch of whiners, this is not game X or Y. If you would log, the game would stay alive. Oh hello, look a new event. Come on guys, fucking look, look, look. Just to see it becoming boring again after a week. They just seem to be so disconnected with their community. It's just sad to watch any sort of discussion on the forums, let alone on the official Discord. It's pointless to roleplay as we have been proven many times over and over again how little it matters to them as nothing you do affects any outcome in canon. The Gallic event was so poorly ended it left a lot of Gallic players frustrated and some even left. The remaining ones are playing as the enclave. The community, the community itself is toxic. No one can deny that. And I will even go so far and say probably one of the most toxic ones I've ever encountered. And I'm playing this game, let alone the mod, since over 12 years now. And that says a lot. I've been part of the or, of other freelancer mods and communities, but the only active ones I was part of was Discovery and Crossfire. Now with toxic, I don't mean everyone. There are little pieces of shits. Don't get me wrong, it's the environment and how things are executed that leaves people with frustration and even morph their attitude to an one another. I had this experience myself, like when shit goes down in Discovery uh, and uh, you start to, and you spend too much time on Discovery, you start to be toxic outside of that uh, circle too. Like I realize on my other communities I'm part of, I'm starting to fucking, you know, <laughs> being really rude and shit you know so it's it has some effect in that i can understand the ones that leave and i can and i can also understand the ones that take extreme measures like no matter what having no like no matter what having an ov overwhelming force to crush their enemies because and this might be an unpopular opinion none of both sides are wrong with how piss poor things are being run in this community people that have been labeled as trolls and assholes are not always like that when you engage in a more civilized conversation. The constant push for each member's trying to eat each other is no more than a mere consequence of the staff team's poor decision makings over the year. If you run a thing like a dictatorship, do not expect everyone to just shut up and play the way you want them to play. I have my own staff team of developers, moderators, admins, etc. As some of you may know, the F0 online community, which is a modding community based on F0 game and even if we have some aggressions over some topics we disagree on it never goes that far that i start a war or outright hold a grudge and no matter what ideas some are coming up with i always take my time 
and listen to the complaints. I agreed to change and I can apologize when I did something wrong. Something which the current team in Discovery can't do because whatever you say, whatever idea you bring, if they already have had a past with you, they will view you as, as that person their whole fucking life unless you're having a really good idea that even they can't deny. This is just me giving some credit to Durandal agreeing, even if it happens rarely, with ideas I bring on the forums. LMAO. Many talented people have been outright ignored or not given the attention they should have received, which resulted in some really good modelers, modelers and coders to leave the mod and even their team. Somehow it's kind of a fade in the freelancer community overall. I can bring up many devs from mods such as Crossfire, Tides of War, Discovery, Night Stalk Universe, such which just want to hold their things personal, um, isolated, instead of, you know, sticking their head into a project they all would work together on. Something you would expect from such a low player based community. But it has always ended in a constant battle of whose mod is the better and no sharing, completely isolated communities. The tribalism in freelancer is real, like it's really bad. You're always forced to pick teams or else, else they create this image of being left out or just ignored, irrelevant. Why are some members toxic as you call it? Why are people leaving? Is it really just nostalgia I'm feeling at this point? Or do I just see potential that this being wasted? I've never seen people trying to actually engage with individuals they call toxic or retarded at this point to sort out their problems. Because I guess in the end even that ends in drama and people just want to play the game. However, if you have a mod built around depending too much on a full server, which worked back in 4.85, that's what you get. It will feel flawed, empty, instead of introducing a new system or a new ship. Why don't you re rework on all the ex existing ones, fix their problems, maybe even let the community participate and help out. I mean, we still have a fucking bomber balance discussion threads, holy shit, dude. I would really, really love to get into details on why I keep saying things are bad, but I guess for that I would have to make a another whole video focused on all the exact reasons why I'm calling them out like that. Sheesh, back to my update. The Harvesters, aka the Gamu AI faction I'm leading have received fair amount of members, I guess around 5 or so, but even there, what is there to do? The Omicrons haven't been really focused on becoming a high risk, high reward sector instead of instead bunch of stuff have been thrown in which yes made the systems a bit more interesting but not enough for me to spend my time there every day or even once a week. If you guys remember, in my first video after I returned I clearly stated that I am very skeptic about joining or hell even leading factions. It takes away so much of your free time. Every member is looking up to you to give them something interesting to do because the game itself fails to provide it. I kind of failed at staying away from it because again nostalgia has grabbed me by the balls and is refusing to let go. But the way factions exist in this mod is so awful, you don't really see a point in spending full time on it because as they mentioned, official factions are not really canon so whatever you do or try to change, be it in roleplay or such, will always end in a huge gamble. Money at this point is your time. Or if you want to go into into details, you know, some people actually paying the devs. But anyway, so money at this point is your time you're investing in this game. And the gamble is if the dev like you or if your story is so mind blowing that they can't deny it. I don't know if that ever happened. If it gets denied despite all your efforts, never have I ever seen a satisfying answer from the team as to why you got denied and mostly they're trying to play it off by, you know, if I ignore this person long enough, maybe he will stop existing. I've been asked this a lot then. Why are you playing it still? Why are you still coming back? Which leads to my question before. Maybe nostalgia? It can't be anything else because I don't have to explain you the definition of insanity, right? So here I am again, inactive because obviously the game does not offer a proper single player experience. And with single player, I don't mean the campaign, but the fact that you could log in no matter what time of the day and expect some sort of a nice encounter with players or inside the mod. Hell, the NPC sucks ass and the looting is shit. Trading is boring as fuck. After you reach a certain level and the oh god mining. I don't know how the fuck I used to do that back in the day and how people are still able to do that even today. 
respect respect my man respect bounty hunting yeah. bounty hunting the fuck is that now let's say it's fun when you have enough people logging with you and you have this small squadron or fleet and are ready to go just to see that none of your enemies or friends are online time zones sure is a bitch the story is so weirdly written and executed most of the time you don't even know which faction is supposed to do what now hell still of today we don't know the basic background and assets lists of each factions there's no set faction x has so many assets so many planets under control the economy is booming uh, civilians are happy they can expand here they can sacrifice this they can do that uh, whatever they have Th these are their allies what they can what, what, can, what can they do what is uh, tech sharing meaning what does that give them uh, as an advantage w what is a dis disadvantage blah 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 it's a role-playing server and one would expect to have such a crucial information given to you because else at this point it's just guessing you fucking guess what your enemy has and you guess what your own faction has or can do so another gamble but Snake, you have to use your imagination. Shut the fuck up, okay? Another problem we have in this community is this constant portrayal of what you play is what you are. I have a perfect example and this video sums it up really well. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet there it is. And it's treated no differently than playing a British soldier. There you are, watching Brokeback Mountain from your living room couch, and all of a sudden, you're gay. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet there it is. All right, now let's now let's get this all off. Get it all <laughs> off. Just because I'm playing a socialist, communist, Nazi, whatever faction does not make me a fucking Nazi or communist instantly. I still don't fucking get how people can be so out of their head and so cut off from reality to think like that so whenever someone brings in such ideas some community some community members think it's because they're some sort of sympathizers and are trying to push in their agenda another huge problem in the current discover universe and its storytelling is it's been cut off from the vanilla roots it may have expanded on the ideas from vanilla lore but seriously has gone way off the road so many things you can't really relate to or pull up an entry to know what the faction is fucking about. When I'm engaging with people in a discussion of vanilla content, I like how I can always waste hours of interesting discussion without thinking I just wasted my time. Because vanilla lore, like it or not, was awesome, even with its flaws. It brought in, it brought in so many interesting plots to be discovered. A quick example of a conversation we had just recently about the Hispania factions. How we figured out that the Corsairs were the only ones that actually established themselves as a foreign nation and are 100% pure Hispanic leftovers because they had a xenophobic culture of not being allowed to, you know, marry outsiders, etc. I think I used the xenophobic word right, I'm not sure. They are raiders, more concerned about their survival rather than being an un underground criminal organization having their hands everywhere like outcasts they also have like rituals and shit like uh, how like a teenage corsair has to like go into a nebula field mine artifacts without shields on or something like they have some sort of culture background another thing is the outcasts call themselves outcasts like and have this criminal agenda with, within houses while the corsairs were named by outsiders and their motivation is sheer survival. So outcasts actually named themselves outcasts, and uh, the corsairs were named corsairs. I'm still, I still don't know what they call them themselves. Like maybe just Hispania, Hispania, um, I don't know, um, army or something. There's so much content that could have been fleshed out better while protecting the roots of vanilla lore. That's why I still don't get when people start to ramble shit and freak out whenever I bring the freelance intro or even go back to its prequel, aka Starlancer, to scoop out informations that are not given anywhere else about the Coalition. Because there isn't much information in the game itself about the Coalition other than the Hispanian rumors about Coalition saboteurs, which by the way the SRA was based on. Now that's something that has value in protecting a faction faction's roots because after that the faction existed as a secret nation 
within Omega-52 only doing surgical strikes, not really aiming for expansionism. Talking here about, you know, the existence of the coalition, they're like start the coalition remnant army, so to say. That's why many always roleplayed it as a rumor. And whenever someone talked about the coalition, they were not believing that there are still remnants around. Which led to pretty cool and interesting roleplays without messing up too much of vanilla lore. The faction could still exist without contradicting anything. I know the coalition in the past years have rather evolved into a more ex expansionist faction, which I partly take the blame for, but you get the point. Anyhow, we talked a lot today, didn't I? Hope you didn't get a headache over this, but let me know on, on the comments below. What do you think of the current state of Discovery DC or even the game freelancer as a whole? I would really like to do a separate video of me going more into de details. So like I said before, you won't see this as a you're just saying it sucks and is bad without getting much into details about what it actually is that sucks. Hater video. Call me a hater, but I seriously wouldn't waste so much writing into this if I wouldn't care. Freelancer is still my all-time favorite game and I'm still having scars from Microsoft canceling Freelancer 2. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video.